Welcome to CGI Federal Voices, where CGI Federal's experts share insights on the latest in federal government management, policy, and technology. I'm your host, Pete Saronis, coming to you from the CGI Federal Studios in Fairfax, Virginia. We're here today with Bob Barr, Vice President, Business Engineering with a focus on the Treasury and IRS missions, and Sandy Bushu, the subject matter expert here at CGI in the transportation sector. Not just the U.S. Department of Transportation, not just the Internal Revenue Service, but the sectors that these agencies support. It's great to see both of you. Thank you. Oh, hey. It's good to be here. Awesome. We're going to uh, jump in here in a minute where I'd love you two to talk a little bit about your journeys and your passion, but to set some context for our audience, today's focus will be on modernization, a loosely used term here inside the Beltway, how technology is helping transform the world, our government, through the, uh, I like to say, investment in technology, but the impact that it has on people and process. Today, our topic will address the various uh, sectors that you both have a lot of experience in, financial markets, transportation, but for our audience, there are 16 critical infrastructure sectors whose assets, systems, and networks, whether physical or virtual, are considered so vital to the United States that their incapacitation or destruction would have a debilitating effect on security, national economic security, national public health or safety, or any combination thereof. And that's me bringing it home as a former executive that the purpose of government is to support the mission of our country and the people. So, Bob, uh, former IRS assistant commissioner, I'm not gonna read the bios, uh, but Wharton School MBA, South Carolina uh, bachelor's degree. It's great to see you and we wanna hear a bit more about that. So why don't you uh, expound a bit on, on your journey and then we'll We'll talk to Sandy here. Well, thanks, Pete. Appreciate that. I've had a long and, and actually very fortunate career. Um, and, and sort of the, the, the theme of it in many ways has been you know, financial services, both uh, on the government side and um, actually on the private sector side equally as well. As you mentioned, um, sort of the pinnacle of government service was uh, with uh, the IRS as Assistant Commissioner of Electronic Tax Administration. But that was... Uh, sort of uh, the tail end, although I'm back as a result of my, uh, my joining CGI here a few years ago, was sort of the pinnacle of a, of a 12-year crusade for me that actually began in uh, South Carolina, um, alma mater, right, Gamecock, and um, it was with the South Carolina uh, Tax Commission, Department of Revenue. Um, and that's when I first ventured into modernizing tax modernizing, um, you know, the, the, the filing and payment of taxes was at the state level. I then went into the private sector, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but then I went into the private sector for several years uh, with um, uh, Intuit, a company that, you know, produces TurboTax, and uh, uh, worked diligently with the private sector to build infrastructure for the electronic filing and payment of taxes. Um, and then it sort of culminated when I joined the uh, federal government um, in the role that I just, you know, described. So it was a, uh, it was a crusade. Uh, I earned the title over that period of time as the godfather of electronic filing and payment of taxes. Uh, so named because uh, some would say that I had to muscle a few people along the way. Uh, but as you know, today, um, over 95% of uh, the individual income tax returns in this country are actually filed electronically. And uh, taxes are paid electronically, refunds come back quick. And so that was, that's been a, uh, a thread uh, for a good bit of my government service or, or service to the country, right? Um, and, and as you can tell, I'm, I'm really passionate about, about it. I couldn't uh, make, uh, you know, um, I couldn't change the tax law, but I could sure make it easier for people to comply, right? And that was the theme of, of my crusade over that, that, that period of time. So there's been a th common theme around financial services for a good bit of it, state government, federal government, and private sector. Uh, and so that's it's kind of the career side of it. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I've raised uh, uh, some kids along the way. <laughs> Uh, picked up the banjo along the way. Uh, my personal plug, I'll have an album out sometime the end nice. of this year. <laughs> uh, tweet blue, that. Somebody yeah, tweet that. Blue, you know, bluegrass. Um, um, and I wrote all the songs. So that's kind of a little bit, uh, I guess, about me from a, 
a career perspective. And I'm excited to be uh, to be here at CGI. Um, you know, we ha we we've reached a point sort of in our our growth, and we're a very substantial company, as as you quite know, where uh, we are uh, really engaging with senior leadership um, in the federal government and really appreciating challenges and opportunities, listening, mm. and, um, and, and uh, ideating around those uh, particular opportunities. I guess I can kind of cl close by saying that, you know, my role here at uh, CGI is twofold. One is, as you mentioned, with you know, some focus on uh, the Treasury and IRS. Uh, the, uh, the IRS uh, got a, a significant tranche of money last year with the IRA, you know, 22. And Congress has uh, expectations for leveraging that funding to modernize. And I know we'll, we'll come back and talk about uh, some of that um, um, a little bit later. So uh, I'm excited to, uh, to be back and to have, have quite a history. When I first sort of in, uh, entered the, the tax space was the late 80s. So that kind of puts a little bit of perspective. I've been around this space for a very long time. But the second part of my role here is uh, helping all of our um, um, sectors think through um, how do we really surface uh, the opportunities and the challenges that are, are, are facing our government agencies and ideate into uh, you know, interesting, innovative, advanced, uh, both uh, uh, along the technology dimension, but also along the experience that we render to our citizens. And what is it going to take and what does it take to, uh, you know, to manage that kind of change? Um, hey, Sandy, uh, a little bit of bragging. I mean, 25 plat years, you know, experience executing all kinds of this world that's post-government of sales, marketing, procurement strategies, uh, you know, former acting and deputy administrator for the Federal Transit Administration. I hope I got that right. We mentioned George Mason, Eureka Red Devil that you are in your <laughs> undergrad. Uh, but I'm excited to hear about your journey, your crusade, if you will. So, um, yes, I am a Eureka College Red Devil. That's in Eureka, Illinois. It's a small farming community that has a college. And my father is a farmer, was a farmer. And um, from the central part of Illinois, the deep in the Midwest and to Washington, D.C., was tri quite the leap for me. Um, I kept always thinking I wanted to go back to Illinois, but I always like to say I caught Potomac fever and I have yet to find the antibiotic to cure me. So you would think, coming from a farm town with a farm background, I'd, I would land up end up at the Department of Agriculture, but instead I ended up at Department of Transportation. I've done a couple of tours at Department of Transportation. I worked on a congressional uh, committee uh, up on the Hill. I've worked for large corporations, small businesses. I had my own small business, all in transportation. So I think I have the real prism, if you will, of transportation, of looking at it from all sides, from the federal side, from the state side, and the local side. So um, at the Department of Transportation, when I was the head of the Federal Transit Administration, um, that was just a really great job. Uh, basically, the FTA really gives out grant money, essentially, to cities, states, and it was a wonderful way to not only to see the country, but also to really benefit people. And I so enjoyed that, building big projects, having big dreams, and to think that the Department of Transportation was a partner in that. It really was really something that really impacted me greatly. You know, when you think about technology and you think about transportation, they just really go hand in hand. As I like to say, when you think about big data and just you know, data, you know, one movement of a tire wheel is a data point. Mm -hmm. Breeze over the wing of an aircraft is a data point. Just think about all the data transportation collects. And CGI not only knows how to interpret that data, they know how to store it, they know how to keep it, they know how to protect it. They bring all sorts of solutions and services to that. So I think transportation and, CT and CGI is just a really natural fit. It's interesting you mentioned uh, the, the vehicles. Look, folks, bipartisan infrastructure law, Chips and Science Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, the money's there. 
The money is going to solve mission problems that, that we'll hit on a couple today. But when I think of transportation, uh, Sandy, uh, aviation, highway and motor carriers, mar maritime transportation, mass transit, pipeline, I'm just reading the, uh, as it's defined, are the seven key subsectors in your agency, uh, postal and shipping and freight rail. The bipartisan infrastructure law is funding a lot of activity in that space. Planes, trains, automobiles, data points, uh, cars are networks on wheels now. Financial systems have been leading the way when their cybersecurity systems, you know, were hackable back in the day. Now they have a lot of the, uh, at least I feel and believe and watch, you know, with my colleagues on, on the street and in Silicon Valley, that the financial market's really pioneering how to secure systems and data, and we'll get into some of that. So thank you for sampling uh, or providing a few samples of, of your sector and, and who you are. So let's, let's move into that. Uh, the, the agency, coming back, coming back to you, Bob, um, at IRS, maybe put on that old hat, you know, what are some of those uh, technology challenges and opportunities that you saw that that are still here today but it is modernizing right there's no silver bullet so maybe talk a little bit about some of the initiatives that you led then and and you're helping you know sherpa the folks that you uh are mentoring there now uh, you know make this world a better place yeah sure thanks you know the interesting thing when you look at let's say more narrowly the irs mm -hmm. you know its, its mission is basically to collect the proper amount of tax, right? Not a dollar more, not a dollar less. But that collection process, you know, is what funds our government, right? We as uh, American citizens, sort of the, 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 the right to, to live, you know, the rent we pay is in taxes, right? And uh, this particular agency um, executes the law created by Congress, and that's always an important distinction because IRS doesn't make the law; it executes and administers the law that uh, that Congress passes as our you know duly elected representatives. Um, but it is an important mission, uh, collecting the, the the proper amount of uh, funding to you know to underwrite the balance uh, or to pay you know for all of the uh, the services that the government's expected to deliver. It could be you know transportation services, social services. Uh, defense, you know, so so it sits in a very very important spot, uh, and uh, you know, uh, in that regard, if if it's unable to, or uh, if it doesn't modernize and and doesn't keep pace, uh, then you know we're, we've got a collections issue, and uh, you know over these uh, many years, um, it has uh, uh, it's been challenged, uh, largely because uh, it's been a roller coaster ride in funding. Um, as as uh, almost administration to administration, uh, sometimes it gets funded, sometimes it gets you know sort of underfunded, and it's it's hard to drive a modernization agenda when uh, funding is uncertain. Now the good news is IRA 22, you know, uh, basically appropriated quite a quite a bit of, uh, of funds for the IRS, looking out uh, 10 years to modernize. What a lot of people don't appreciate is um, the IRS has uh, approaching about 800 applications it operates on, and a third of those are 25 years or older. Um, and I'm always struck by probably the most important core system, which is what, what the service calls indiv uh, the individual master file, which is all of our tax data. That application is over 60 years old. Hmm. And uh, it's a difficult one to modernize when you can't, you know, you, you can't predict uh, what funding you'll have. Most of the funding the IRS uses is year-over-year -year operating money, you know, just to collect and answer phones and process tax returns and so forth. So the, the funding to modernize has certainly been uneven over time, and, uh, <clears throat> and that's made it difficult. Now, I'll say uh, the other thing in the context of modernization is we have to appreciate that uh, you can modernize along sort of multiple dimensions. Technology is one. One that uh, drives uh, the IRS these days is also experience. So if you look at the strategic operating plan that was recently released by the IRS, and, uh, and in fact even yesterday, one of the federal advisory committees with, uh, within the IRS, sponsored under the Federal Advisory Committee Act, it's called ETAC, the Electronic Tax Administration, um, or the Electronic Tax Administration Advisory Committee, uh, put forward a number of recommendations 
as it does every year. And, and this uh, group uh, does report to, uh, to Congress. But they're beginning to appreciate and balance experience because it's not just about under, under sort of the underlying tech that drives it, but it's about uh, recognizing, um, and, and I, will, I often have to smile about this having uh, you know, had family across this, but right now there are five different demographic uh, you know, generations out there from the silent generation down to Gen Z. You've got five generations who all have different expectations of experience. And the IRS touches everybody. So, um, it, you know, every taxpayer, let's say. Um, and Gen Z is filing taxes now. So it has to balance how do you render an experience across five different demographic segments um, and, and that's a big challenge. You know, a Gen Z is a gamified, you know, make, make my experience gamified because I grew up on video games, et cetera. But then you got the silent generation, like, uh, you know, my mom who uh, unfortunately just passed away and my father had passed away a decade ago, but she didn't have a cell phone. She didn't have cable TV, or she had cable, but no internet access, okay? You know, when you have on one end somebody who has no access to the internet, uh, has no cell phone, filing taxes. And then on the other end, you have somebody who uh, doesn't have a landline, <laughs> right? And everything's on the phone. That's a huge challenge. Mm -hmm. So modernization, we have to think about in the context of, of uh, you know, technology, experience, and, and even culture, right? I love it. And, and look, uh, just because, uh, mom, when you're listening or watching, I mean, uh, she's had a cell phone or a mobile phone or a smartphone for a decade and just I get the call every every couple of weeks or days. Hey, honey, how do I send a picture again? Uh, is there a texting button? I'm like, I've given up. You know what, Mom? <laughs> You're in a constant state of learning. Uh, modernization pillars. I did read the strategic operating plan um, that just came out. And folks, one of the, the, the objectives, deliver cutting edge technology data and analytics to operate more effectively. That's one of five. The others taxpayer issues quickly resolve, focus on expanded enforcement, attract, retain, and empower a highly skilled workforce. I appreciated you bringing the, the people process technology component into it. Sandy, let's go with that. Let's talk a bit more about you know the transportation department and the sector. Uh, you could argue is the one that is uh, getting a lot of this funding under the infrastructure law to fix the crumbling infrastructure that we depend on every time we get in a car, get in a plane, and, uh, and so forth. So. Let's go. Yes. So the bill that was passed, the uh, bipartisan infrastructure uh, law, um, was what you call a surface bill. So that covers uh, highways, transit, uh, maritime. Um, that was the bill that was passed. So it doesn't really cover aviation, although there was money for airports, but it doesn't cover aviation. Actually, today, as we sit here, there is a bill being debated on the Hill for the FAA reauthorization bill. And that bill five years ago uh, was authorized at $93 billion, and it just passed the House T&I Committee, Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, last week at a level of $104 billion. So the FAA will get another, will, get, will receive its authorization uh, bill, hopefully, uh, at the end of the year for its additional funding for the next four years. So yes, transportation has done extremely well in the uh, last three years from a funding level. So they do have that tool, the funding tool, to help to modernize, uh, moder modernize its systems and its projects and to provide more money out to the states and to the localities. So that's all a really, really you know, good thing. I wanna go back though to something what you said earlier, Steve, and that was about the different, uh, Pete, excuse me, about the different modes. And um, I just wanna give you a little bit of inside baseball tips here. Um, at the Department of Transportation, it is organized by modes, M-O-D-E-S. So aviation, highway, transit, maritime, all of those are 
verticals, but within the U.S. Department of Transportation, they call those modes, transportation modes. So when you hear transportation experts say mode, uh, that's what they're referencing. So I thought that would be of interest to our audience just to know that little little tidbit, because I rec- when I first came to CGI, I kept on saying mode, and they were all looking at me like quizzically, what is a mode? So... Um, Anyway, I thought that was a really interesting thing. No, it's it's wonderful. And I want to come back to you for a second because you also, when we were prepping for this, we were talking about the the culture yes. of transportation and safety. Like you got me at hello with this is what we speak to. And I, I, I as, a, as an organization and safety uh, was or will always be our number one priority. Um, I caught a quote, I, I, Secretary Elaine Chow said, and to me that just is something that, that, that resonates. Uh, and, and thank you, though, for that mode. It's when my friends at the uh, NIH or HHS talk about optives, and it's just knowing the language yes. at the DOE, you know, is program departmental elements, just teaching industry and uh, how to engage in conversations, and we'll get into that in a minute. But, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that safety culture and just, you know, bring it home? Absolutely. So safety is really embedded at USDOT. And I would say to you, it's more today than it was actually even when I was there. Everything is about safety. And that sometimes can make it difficult for USDOT to modernize its technology because of their safety culture. Today, their safety culture is so distinct that if you go there, um, or if you're at a conference, that's a safety conference, they will do a safety briefing before the conference, uh, asking uh, somebody to be a leader, volunteer, uh, recognizing where the exits are, asking if somebody knows CPR. Um, And at first, when you first kind of go through that briefing, your first time, you're a little bit taken back, and you're like, well, this is silly. But actually, it's not silly. USDOT is trying to really nurture and to remind not only its own folks, but also the industry that safety is always first. And then to that point, I remember we we were discussing, and I thought you felt this was of interest, because it's of interest to me. Um, In transportation, unfortunately, when there is an accident and lives are lost, we don't call them passengers. We lost 10 passengers. We lost 20 passengers, their souls. Mm. Now, it's really funny because when you listen to the news, usually the news media calls them casualties, passengers, but a DOT expert, the head of the National Transportation Safety Board, will never call them that. They will call them souls. And that really kind of puts it in perspective, doesn't it? A hundred percent. It really just shows you how... USDOT really considers their mission critical um, because it's to ensure that safety is paramount and it's at it, it, and, and and it's really their their number one uh, number one issue and it really is a part of has become a part of their culture and I really salute that. I, I will say as as we close this segment out and we jump into a little bit of the open government component, I want to thank you both for and again being a former uh, federal executive who grew up as a GS seven. Uh, The mission of government is unique, and and culture is critical. And CGI, uh, clearly, by recruiting and and, and, and having the opportunity to have you as part of its team, taking that message back to the very agencies that they want to help support is spot on. And anybody listening to this, mission is a loosely used term. Modernization, a loosely used term. People process technology. Some people say a cliche. You all, I hope, and everybody heard, uh, I appreciate that, uh, that 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 is the mission, and government has a role and industry has a role. So thank you. CGI Federal Voices is a production of CGI Federal, a wholly owned subsidiary of CGI Incorporated. You can find CGI Federal Voices on your preferred podcast platform or watch the video version on YouTube. Subscribe or follow and spread the word to your colleagues. Learn more about CGI Federal's solutions and services at CGIFederal.com. Insights you can act on.